Recently, the Airbus A321XLR has been attracting special attention from the aviation industry with the latest updates on its development, delivery, and commercial operations. Considered one of the biggest breakthroughs in the narrow-body aircraft line, the new jet promises to bring the ability to fly further, save more fuel, and open up many new routes never seen before. With the interest of many major airlines in the world, will this aircraft line fulfill the expectation of becoming a game changer in the sky in the near future? Let's find out in today's episode. The XLR has officially entered commercial service with the first aircraft delivered to Spain's Iberia and Ireland's Aer Lingus. This is a major step forward for Airbus, as the derivative of the A321neo, first launched in 2017, has proven its superiority in the single aisle segment. With its extended range, the XLR can operate intercontinental flights that were previously reserved for wide-body aircraft such as the Airbus A330 or Boeing 787. One of the biggest benefits of the narrow-body aircraft is its remarkable fuel efficiency. According to Airbus, this aircraft consumes up to 30% less fuel per seat than previous generations of aircraft, helping airlines not only reduce operating costs, but also reduce emissions into the environment. This makes it an attractive proposition for airlines looking to balance performance and profitability in an increasingly robust industry. Reed Moody, Director of Strategy and Planning at Aer Lingus notes that the A321 XLR gives the network the ability to expand to new destinations that they would not have been able to take the risk on with a wide body before. It allows us to go to cities that we would not be able to take the risk on with a wide body, he says. Aer Lingus has already put two new jets into service and plans to add four more by the end of the year to serve transatlantic routes and expand connectivity. Iberia has also been quick to deliver the XLR. Neither of these airlines are part of the European conglomerate International Airlines Group, IAG, and are placing high hopes on the new Airbus aircraft. According to data from aviation analytics firm Sirium, Airbus has received more than 500 firm orders for the XLR from airlines around the world. Other big names from across the continent are waiting for the first airplanes to join their fleets, given the aircraft's strong appeal in the commercial aviation market. Before the XLR, the Boeing 757 was the go-to aircraft for transatlantic flights, connecting North America and Europe with efficiency and flexibility. However, as aviation technology advanced, the aircraft became obsolete. The last Boeing 757 rolled off the production line at the Everett Washington plant in 2004, marking the end of an era. However, many airlines, including United Airlines, continued to operate the Boeing airplane because they had not found a truly suitable replacement. However, with the introduction of the XLR, an improved version with longer range and superior fuel efficiency, many airlines expressed their desire to quickly switch to this new aircraft. Not only does it offer significant fuel savings over its predecessor, it also opens up the opportunity to expand its network. Some airlines, like Aer Lingus, see the new aircraft not just as a replacement for the 757, but also as a key to growing their transatlantic strategy. Thanks to its superior range while retaining the flexibility of a narrow body, the A321 XLR allows airlines to open direct routes to smaller cities that were previously uneconomical. Instead of relying on major hubs like London, Paris, or New York, airlines can connect directly to new destinations, creating a competitive advantage and providing a more convenient experience. By the way, if you are new or haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then show us your support by clicking the subscribe button so you will be the first to see our upcoming videos. Now, let's continue. We're going to open up 10 to 12 new cities in Eastern Europe and North Africa out of Newark and Washington Dulles. United CEO Scott Kirby said on the Airshow podcast in June, we're excited about it. While Kirby did not reveal the exact destinations United is targeting, based on the airline's recent expansion strategy, it is possible to predict interesting and less popular destinations from a U.S. market perspective. For example, Bilbao in Spain, or Nuuk, the capital of Greenland, are both routes with great potential thanks to the airplane's long-range yet flexible capabilities. United is expected to receive the first of 50 XLRs on order in early 2026, marking a major step in its strategy to expand into new markets. In addition to United, American Airlines is also taking advantage of the A321 XLR to expand its transatlantic service. 
Brian Zanotens, American's head of network planning, told the points guy in November, we're looking at new secondary Spain, Portugal, UK, anything in range, France, Germany, Scandinavia, all these smaller destinations that we think a wide body just isn't well suited for. The airline's first new narrow body is expected to make its official debut later this year. The airline initially plans to deploy the aircraft on premium transcontinental routes between New York and its two key West Coast hubs, Los Angeles and San Francisco. With the ability to fly longer distances while maintaining fuel efficiency, the plane will help American Airlines enhance its premium flying experience while optimizing operating costs on these high-demand routes. In addition to supporting network expansion plans, the introduction of the XLR also brings many strategic benefits to airlines. One potential application is to increase frequencies on existing routes. Routes that previously only had one flight per day could be supplemented, providing greater flexibility for passengers, especially those who fly for work and need to choose a more convenient flight time. In addition, the plane opens up opportunities to extend the operating hours on seasonal routes. Previously, many routes were only operated in the summer due to the high demand for travel during this time. However, with lower operating costs and the ability to optimize flight efficiency, airlines can maintain these routes all year round. This means that passengers can continue to fly to their favorite destinations even in the winter, a time when airlines previously had to temporarily suspend operations for economic reasons. European aviation regulators have required a number of safety modifications to the XLR, which have resulted in an increase in the overall weight of the aircraft. While these changes are intended to improve safety and operational stability, they also affect the aircraft's range. According to industry experts, these adjustments have reduced the aircraft's maximum range from 5,400 miles, 4,700 nautical miles, to around 5,200 miles, 4,500 nautical miles. The reduction in range, while not large in theory, can have a significant impact on the ability of airlines to operate. For example, at its original range, the A321 XLR could fly transatlantic flights from New York to most major European cities, including further afield destinations in Central and Eastern Europe. However, with its shortened range, the aircraft may only be able to connect New York to major Western European destinations, such as London, Paris, Madrid, or Frankfurt, while longer routes to cities such as Budapest, Warsaw, or Athens may be out of bounds. The XLR is absolutely heavier than Airbus wanted it to be originally, said Jan Ostrover, editor of the Air Current, on a recent episode of the Air Show. That really affected the heavily loaded long-range operations that airlines like Frontier wanted with 240 seats. That's why low-cost carrier Frontier Airlines canceled its order for the XLR in August. The airline feared the aircraft might not have enough range to fly some of the routes it had hoped to see, like the East Coast to Rome. Most airlines, however, don't seem too concerned about the impact this would have on their plans. Many airlines remain confident in the aircraft's efficiency and believe that the range adjustments will not significantly impact their expansion strategies. Ramiro Sequeira, CEO of Iberia, said that the A321 XLR's shortened range only really becomes an issue during the peak summer season, when demand spikes and routes are often at full capacity. However, outside of those peak times, the Spanish airline believes the aircraft will still fully meet its expectations. Iberia officially put the first XLR into service on flights between Madrid and Boston last November. The airline also plans to expand its operations to Washington, D.C., scheduled for April this year. However, this plan is dependent on the progress of the delivery of the second jets from Airbus, which has been delayed. Regarding the long-term strategy, Iberia CEO Sequeira remained tight-lipped about further plans for the aircraft, only revealing that new routes are a commercial secret, suggesting that the airline is still considering further destinations to optimize its operations. Although the A321 XLR is a narrow-body aircraft, Iberia is committed to providing the same space and service experience on board as the wide-body aircraft it operates. Meanwhile, American Airlines is also preparing to launch a new generation of seats on its new aircraft later this year. The airline will equip 20 flagship suites in business class with the ability to fully lie flat, providing maximum comfort for passengers. 
In addition, the aircraft will have 12 spacious premium economy seats in the middle cabin and an improved version of the economy seat in the rear. Robert Assam, CEO of American Airlines, expressed satisfaction with the new product, emphasizing that the flagship suites line will bring a premium experience to passengers on international long-haul routes. He affirmed that comfort is the top priority when deploying XLR operations on intercontinental routes. In addition to American Airlines and Iberia, Aer Lingus has also invested in the airplane interior with a business class cabin design with flat seats in the front and standard economy class in the back. Passenger feedback on the experience of flying on this narrow body aircraft has been largely positive. According to Moody, an aviation expert, in terms of experience, Passengers really don't care too much whether they fly on a narrow body or a wide body aircraft as long as the service and amenities are guaranteed. With its long range, cost effective operation and ability to deliver a premium experience, the Airbus XLR is gradually proving itself to be an ideal choice for airlines operating transatlantic routes and longer journeys that were previously only possible on wide body aircraft.